Hi and welcome to the Malak Cookery channel. Today we're going to be making a traditional pulled pork recipe. I'll explain a little bit in a minute about what I mean by traditional pulled pork. The De Malat Spice Blend we're going to be using from their range is purpose made for this job. It's their Carolina Pork Rub. And as usual, a full list of ingredients will be given at the end of the video. So when we say traditional pulled pork, what we actually mean is a barbecue recipe that's actually prepared with a dry rub. Unfortunately, when big business gets involved in these popular dishes, they always try and take the consumer down the route of a wet marinade sauce because most of their wet marinade sauces contain a product called corn syrup and corn syrup is incredibly profitable. So over the last few years, what we've gone from is a barbecue recipe with a dry rub to a marinade recipe done in the kitchen in the oven, just covered in this, this corn syrup gloop. So we're gonna get back to basics, get back to the original. I'm gonna show you how to do a traditional pulled pork recipe on the barbecue. So firstly, we'll deal with the actual pork joint itself. And then for the red sauce, which we finish the dish off with, we'll look at those ingredients later. So here I've got pork shoulder. There's about a kilo and a half here, and that's more than enough for a family of four. We've got about 30 grams of Carolina pork rub, Demalat Carolina pork rub. And we've got some black pepper and some sea salt as well. Also got some uh, butcher's twine, which we're going to use later, and I'll show you exactly what that's for. So the actual piece of shoulder joint that we've got, this is standard stuff from the supermarket, comes wrapped in plastic with some twine around. I've taken the twine off. The next thing we need to do with it is actually separate the skin from the meat itself. The reason for that is if we put the rub over the top of the skin, there's no way that is gonna penetrate through and give any flavor to the actual uh, meat itself. So we need to actually remove the skin. So I've done that using a, a very sharp knife. And the next thing we want to do, once we've removed the skin, is place it onto a piece of food wrap. And then I'm gonna season this quite well with some black pepper and sea salt. So we do that on both sides. Be quite generous with the salt. So once we've seasoned that, I'm going to wrap it in the food wrap. We're then going to place this in the fridge for two hours. With regard to the actual uh, pork joint itself, we're just simply going to cover this with our de Malat Carolina pork rub. And again, cover that with cling film. That's going to be sat in the fridge again for two hours. So that's it. The whole joint is now covered with the de Malat Carolina pork rub. I'm now gonna wash my hands and come back. We'll cover this with cling film. And this again is in the fridge for two hours. Right, we've taken the joint out of the fridge now. That's been there for two hours. One of the issues that we might have when we're cooking, especially a smaller joint like this on the barbecue, is the potential for it to dry out. One of the tricks we can employ is, although we've taken the skin off in order to get the dry rub uh, penetrating into the meat as much as possible, we can actually now reapply the skin 
onto the joint before it actually goes onto the barbecue and that will assist greatly the retention of moisture within the actual meat itself. It will definitely help to stop this joint from drying out. So that's where the butcher's twine comes in. So all I'm going to do now is put the um, skin back onto the actual joint and then maybe just a couple of wraps around with the butcher's twine, tie it off and then that will be ready then to go onto the barbecue. So that's it, the skin's back on again, tied quite loosely, you don't have to be expert at, at tying off uh, joints. This is a really good tip though for helping to keep that joint moist during that extended cooking period. Now the skin will stay on for the first two hours, we'll then take the skin off, cook that separately and that'll be a fantastic side dish and then we'll let the meat carry on cooking for that extra hour. So the next thing to do now is obviously get the barbecue prepared. We're going to leave this to stand for half an hour. because So it's been out of the fridge for half an hour, so it comes up to room temperature before it goes anywhere near the barbecue. That half an hour will give us enough time to go and prep the barbecue to put this straight on. Okay, so the barbecue's come up to temperature now. So we're going to, we're going to be cooking the um, pork shoulder on the indirect side of the barbecue. If you want to know the difference between direct and indirect cooking on a barbecue, have a look at our barbecue basics videos. Uh, there's three of them. I think video number three deals with direct and indirect cooking. So we've got the coals on this side. We're going to be cooking the um, pork shoulder on this side. I've also got a tray in the half of the uh, barbecue grate, which doesn't have coals in. And in there is just some water. That's two reasons for placing that in there. One is that it's going to capture a lot of the juices that drop off from the um, pork joint. But secondly, it's going to add some humidity as well to try and keep this pork joint as moist as possible. Always get into the habit before you cook on a barbecue get, to get the barbecue up to temperature and also to season the, um, the actual food grate. What I mean by that is just wiping the food grate over with some vegetable oil. And the best way I find to do that is with a piece of kitchen towel. Just dip that into the oil and use the tongs just to go over the grate. So we just place our pork shoulder joint on there. Now this is going to cook for two hours. Um, we're going to try and maintain between 250 and 300 degrees Fahrenheit uh, within the actual barbecue itself. And from time to time I'll just be topping up the coals to make sure that we maintain that temperature. Okay, so the pork joint has been cooking for about two and a half hours. Uh, we did plan on two hours, but the temperature in the barbecue has actually dropped below 250 on a couple of occasions. So I've decided to just extend the cooking time a little bit. The next thing I'm going to do is to cut off the twine, take the skin off and then carry on cooking this in the same method for another hour. What I'm going to do with the skin, I'm going to put the skin over onto the direct side of the heat, uh, fat side down first to dry it out rapidly, then turn it over onto the skin side and we're going to make some decent crackling out of that. So that's the next thing for us to do. Right, so the barbecue bit is done. Let's see what we've got here. So we've got this incredible crackling from the skin. Just cut into that. Mmm, that is absolutely fantastic. We've got our shoulder joint, which is done. You know it's done, I mean, you can see pieces have started to fall off it. We just need to put, if you put two forks in and just try and prise it apart, if it breaks apart like that, then you know that it's actually done. This is the tray that sat under the shoulder joint. And this is just an incredible flavour to all these juices in there. So what we're going to do with some of this 
juice is we're going to add this to our red sauce and then the red sauce is obviously going to be added to the um, the shoulder joint once that's broken apart and shredded. We need to let the shoulder joint rest now for about half an hour. That gives us time now to do the red sauce. So let's have a look at the ingredients, what we're going to need for the red sauce and we'll get that made. Right, to make the red sauce, we want some good quality tomato ketchup. We, there's about half a cup here. Some pure honey, about half a cup. So equal parts of good quality tomato sauce and honey and a tablespoon of Damalat um, Carolina Port Rub. That gives a bit of continuity between the actual red sauce and the meat that we've roasted, because obviously the rub was Carolina Port Rub on there. Mix these together, and then we're going to add some of the juices from the tray that was sat underneath the, the meat joint. Right, so the next thing to do with this, I'm going to put this on a very low light, bring it to a gentle simmer and simmer it for five minutes, then it's done. We can then add this to our shredded pork shoulder. Okay, so that's the uh, red sauce done. Absolutely fantastic flavor. And a lot of that comes from this tray, the juices that have dripped into this tray. Seriously, if I could bottle that, absolutely amazing so that's it fell apart shredded perfectly but still really moist want to add the red sauce to it and the smell is absolutely amazing and then we're just going to mix that in and we're going to serve this on a bun with some salad and fries. Okay, so that's all of the sauce mixed in. So just to recap, between 250 and 300 degrees Fahrenheit, try and keep the barbecue to that temperature. Ideally you want it to be between 280 and 300 if you can get a sort of stable temperature going. Unfortunately I let it drop below 250 so I made the decision to actually cook it for longer which turned out to be the right decision. So this has taken actually 3 hours and 40 minutes instead of the 3 hours that's planned. I did say at the start of the video that this was enough for 4 people. Having a look at it now and the fact we're going to serve it on a bun with some fries and salad I'll suggest this is more than enough for six people. So that's it, our traditional pulled pork done on the barbecue. As usual, please subscribe to the channel and if you've enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.